So you think you have the skills and knowledge to face a life and death scenario and come out on the other side? We'll see about that. Oh. Ah! Welcome to Watch Mojo's Top 5 Myths. In today's installment, we're counting down the top 5 survival myths. Before we begin, we publish new videos every day, so be sure to subscribe for more great content. Thanks to the countless wilderness and survival television shows out there, we've got a whole subset of the human population that feel totally capable of surviving in extreme scenarios, despite a complete lack in actual training or experience. We're exploring some of the greatest misconceptions about what to do in emergency situations because, quite frankly, the stuff you learned on TV could get you killed. <coughs> Myth number five, boiling water makes it safe. Boiling water is an excellent method of purifying water when you don't have access to your own fresh supply. A one minute rolling boil works to kill off any bacteria, viruses or parasites that may call that mystery water home. But those aren't the only things you need to worry about when finding fresh water. Boiling does not eliminate dirt or debris. If your water is murky, you should find a way to strain it before consuming it, as you have no idea what those particles could be. In a jam, any clean cloth material can work as a strainer. But sadly, in the case of chemically contaminated water, there is no quick fix to render it drinkable. Filthy and stinking, but undeniably lovely. Myth number four, moss grows on the north side of trees. Moss always points to civilization. The knowledge passed down by explorers and bushmen of yesteryears have given us many practical, low-tech wilderness survival tips and tricks. For example, if you're without a compass, you can use the Big Dipper to identify the North Star. You can also set up two sticks to track the movement of the night sky and orient yourself that way. Sadly, this oft-repeated moss-based method of identifying the North does not work quite so well. While many types of moss do tend to grow on the north side of trees due to the sun conditions, they can easily creep on the other side of the trunk depending on where the shade falls. In reality, moss will grow anywhere cool, damp and shady. Admit it, we're lost. All right, we're lost. Myth number three, swim parallel to the shore in a riptide. You see, some of these myths may prove helpful in certain survival scenarios, but their application is always conditional to a number of situation specific factors. If applied universally with blind faith, they can prove fatal instead. Case in point, swimming parallel to the shoreline is often an effective method of escaping a riptide, but it only applies to riptides pulling you directly away from shore. While that is the most common form, others exist. Drift currents can run parallel to the shore or even diagonal from it. In such cases, swimming parallel to the shore will do you no good and may actually worsen your situation. In any strong current, swim perpendicular to the flow, never against it. And this riptide is certainly nothing daddy can't struggle against. Help! Help! Somebody help! Myth number two, use a tourniquet to stop heavy bleeding. For once, we encounter a myth that television shows are actively helping to dispel rather than reinforce. Luke Cage was on the receiving end of a stern talking to for improperly applying a tourniquet in the Marvel Netflix series. Yeah, you're lucky she didn't lose her arm. That is way too close to the wound. It's not that tourniquets shouldn't be used, it's that they should be kept as a last resort and only applied by someone who has received proper training. In brief, it should only be used after amputation or to staunch the blood loss from a wound bleeding profusely enough to result in imminent death. As soon as the tourniquet is applied, there is a heightened risk of nerve damage, blood clots and the loss of a limb in question. You could take that tourniquet off, Lieutenant. Myth number one, drink your own urine to avoid dehydration. He's drinking his own urine. He's drinking his piss. Dehydration makes people desperate, so much so that they may attempt to drink ocean water or source it from a cactus. Before we continue with urine, let's just clarify this minor myth. You can't tap a cactus. The contents are often highly acidic, toxic, or sure to make you violently ill. When it comes to extreme dehydration in hot, dry environments, urine might provide an extended lease on life but it will be short-lived and not without cost. Urine leaves the body for a reason, and drinking it reintroduces waste, putting added strain on your system. Most experts recommend using that urine with some material to make a cooling wet bandana for your brow instead, as it helps regulate body temperature. So which of these myths did you believe? Check out these other great clips from WatchMojo and subscribe for new videos every day.